Recording, we're officially live. We're officially all the way in. Remember, the microphone can hear your thoughts, so don't distract it, right? Okay, biggest thing is we're going to talk about some advanced shape creations today. Specifically, I'm going to demo all the different aspects of the Pathfinder tool and then some use cases of the Shape Builder tool and how you can apply both of those to your projects thus far. Um, since this is getting into just some more techniques and uh, practice stuff, you don't have to use these tools, but they are super useful ones that I'm using all the time in the graphic design sphere. And so it's really, really helpful that you know um, how they work. You can see all the demo I did for uh, first period. So I'm pulling open my 3.1 work in progress so far. I'm learning that I chose a really challenging uh, animal to vectorize. There's a lot of shapes. So, oh, this was, did we do this one? No, that was the other first period one. Where's my lizard? It's gone. Oh, here it is. Okay, cool. All right. So we talked about the eyedropper tool. We talked about the direct selection tool to make this kind of avocado piece that I'm going to make uh, so a tiny bit darker so that it reads on camera a little better. Um, I'm going to close this for now. Here's where we're at currently. We did those demos, kind of seeing how the direct selection tool works. We're going to focus specifically on the Pathfinder tool. So before I show you how to use this on your uh, your artwork, I'm going to give you a little demo on how the Pathfinder tool uh, functions for the most part. I used orange and blue in first period. Let's do purple. Let's purple's complement. We can't think of it right now. It's like green and yellow. We'll do Joker colors. Classic Batman purple and like a dark green kind of thing. OK, so this is important. Because the Pathfinder and the Shape Builder uh, require some type of overlap or two different types of paths interacting with one another. So the first part of the uh, actually getting the Pathfinder tool on your page is going to Window. If you remember back from the Mountain logo, the Window panel holds every single tool that Illustrator has available in alphabetical order. So if you're ever following a tutorial or something, or you're trying to rewatch a Zoom room, or you accidentally lose a window, like your layers panel or your artboards panel or whatever, it all lives right here in this window tab, which is, when I get a little, one of these, right up here at the top, okay? So if you click on window and then find your way down to, there's only a couple P options. The first one being Pathfinder. It's gonna pop open this little box right here that has shape modes on the top. You see there's four of those. And then Pathfinders at the bottom, you'll see there are six of those. All of these pieces require at least two overlapping paths of some variety. So we're going to focus first on the shape modes. Yes, hand up. Yeah, I'll check it. So we're going to focus on shape modes first. And then this green and purple uh, shape thing that I have here is going to function as my demo. Oh. Okay, so the first thing we're going to focus on in just a sec are these shaped weapons. No. Okay, you just seem to sit tight for now because they're not in there, and I'll help you catch up. All right, so shape modes. Uh, I already said they require two overlapping paths. Let's start with this first one right here. If you hover over each of them, it's going to tell you a little bit about what they do. And a lot of the little graphic and the name is super descriptive, which is really helpful. Um, but I want to give you a live example of how they work, especially how the uh, kind of stack order happens in Illustrator. So what helped me understand Illustrator a lot when I was learning it is that each time you create a shape of some variety like this, or each time you make a new uh, mark, so to speak, on your page, it's kind of like cutting up little strips of paper or pieces of paper where the, um, the newest one, the one that you made most recently, is going to sit on top of all the other ones because it's all going to stack up with each other. So like I made the green circle second, so it stays stacking over top. Oh, there's some other circle in here. Oh, OK, anyway. It stays stacking over top of the purple square because I made that one first. So with Unite, the first of the shape modes, when I highlight at least two overlapping paths by just clicking and dragging with my selection tool, 
you can see my bounding box is going to appear like this. When I click on Unite, it's going to combine these two paths together and take the properties of the top shape. So since the circle came second, it established the fill. It established the properties on this new shape that I can take my direct selection tool to, uh, just like we did yesterday. But this is a new complex shape that you can resize, adjust however you need. But it is a single shape now uh, that we've used the Unite tool. So let me keep that as an example. We'll just pull this off to the side. This is going to be the Unite tool. So you can see this later on if you ever need. So this is Unite. Hover over the two of them. Make sure you just have the shape selected. Click on that Unite, and it's going to take the rules of the top one. OK, moving next, we have minus front, which you can probably guess what that does. But I'll give you the, the quick example right here. Minus front. It's going to take whatever shape is in the front away from the shape that is in the back. So if I highlight both of these, let's make these underneath so you can actually tell. If I highlight both of these shapes and then I minus the front, uh, like I said, it minus the front, um, it's going to take whatever the front shape is out and leave behind. It still has a square bounding box around the outside, but this is a curve that you can manipulate with your direct selection tool if you really wanted to. Just takes that whatever is overlapping in the front off of the back. And however many uh, paths you select or however many like aspects are all included um, in the thing that you minus the front from, it's going to change the way that it looks uh, at the end. So if we highlight these, move on to our next shape builder tool, which is going to be intersect. Let's pull this one down. Intersect. And you can experiment with these ahead of me if you want. I'm just going to go piece by piece. Um, intersect. It's going to do exactly what it sounds like. And wherever the lines have uh, sort of like a Venn diagram overlap, it's going to only take that part. So if you look at these two uh, selected paths, we kind of have an x-ray of where the square continues through the green circle, right? And you can also see that there's a polygon right here. Remember, these are closed shapes, anything that does not have uh, an open end. There's another polygon right here. That's what intersect is going to be looking for when we click on the intersect button. And it's only going to have that little piece left behind. Uh, it's going to take the role of the top Actually, let me check real quick. Yeah, it is. OK, it's only going to take the role or the properties of the top shape. So it took green because it was the circle. Uh, and that was a majority of where the intersect information came from. So you can make this little piece that fits in the space between these two right here. Our fourth and final shape mode is going to be uh, exclude, which does the opposite of intersect. And instead of where they overlap, it only leaves what uh, is left behind. So this is exclude. Exclude like this. OK, so if I select both of these and I click on exclude, it's going to take the roll of the top shape and cut out that middle portion, or not the roll, excuse me, the, um, the properties of the top shape. But you'll notice if I hover over this curve on the left and then this Pac-Man on the right, you see how they each have a little red outline? Whenever you create like an actual slice between different shapes where they completely stop like this and the path kind of does one of these situations, you have created two separate shapes here that you can ungroup. So if I click on this shape, it selects the whole thing. If I click on this shape, it selects the whole thing. But if with it selected, I right click or I click with my middle finger and I go to ungroup, I now have two separate shapes, two separate pieces that I can arrange to be whatever I need them to be. This I'm commonly using to create like cool typography effects, um, but it is a valuable shape tool that you can use uh, to create some of these more complicated uh, sort of outlines here. OK, so these four are your shape modes. Now I'm going to move on to the Pathfinder tool, and then I'm going to show you some of the Shape Builder tools. So again, feel free to tune me out a little bit here if you want to, um, because I'm just giving demos. OK, so we're going to scoot this over. Oh, extra one. This is going to be our Pathfinders. The Pathfinders behave a little bit uh, more in more detail than shape modes. Shape modes are really good at creating shapes, which makes sense. Pathfinders is going to do some type of relationship with the paths to create um, just a different sort of effect, which I'll show you right here. So there's six of these. I'm going to pull off my first one. And that one is uh, divide. This is the one I'm using the most frequently. So what divide does 
a lot of them, like I said, mention, or a lot of them do exactly what their name sounds like. If I highlight these two shapes again, remember you need at least two overlapping paths every time. And I click on divide, it appears like nothing happens. I click divide, doesn't look like anything did it. What divide does is anywhere that there's overlap is gonna place a slice. That when I right click with my middle finger and I go ungroup, I now have three separate pieces all sliced up wherever the overlap was. Because it's dividing my path into multiple different parts here. So let's do a little visual like that so you can see the division happening here. Okay, moving on next, we have trim. Um, I will say while we're getting into this, some of the pathfinding and shape building tools perform very, very similar, um, very, very similar functions, which you'll see in this demo. I will tell you from my professional experience, the one I use most of the time is going to be divide, unite, and intersect are the ones that I'm using most frequently. The rest of these I kind of ignore. Uh, minus front I use sometimes. Um, this is all dependent on different designers too, different styles. But just so you have some context, these three are the ones that I'm using 99% of the time. Okay, anyway, sorry, back to trim. Trim has a little icon that when you click on it, doesn't look like much happens as well. But when I right click and ungroup, most of the pathfinders you will need to right click and ungroup, it's gonna trim the front shape off of the back shape. That's all it does. Front shape remains intact, back shape gets the slice out. So if I were to put it over here, select these two again, and then trim one more time, now I have, after I ungroup it, of course, now I have this, what remains of my square, my Swiss cheese square, whereas my, um, my original circle is untouched. So trim is cool. Yeah, that's trim. Okay, moving next, we have merge, which behaves super, super similarly to Unite does, but not always in the uh, the same way. So let's see if I can line these up. There we go. Okay, so this is merge. I'm gonna select my two overlapping paths like normal. I'm gonna merge them together, and it doesn't look like much happens until I go to ungroup them, and it behaves exactly like trim does. So merging, we'll connect them together and make them form one shape, but it accomplishes the exact same thing that trim does. And I personally don't understand the difference that in depth, if I'm gonna be so honest. But merge is gonna stick them together first. Once you decide to ungroup them, they will be behaving exactly like trim did. Okay, moving on, what do we got next? A couple more of these, and then I'll show you the shape builder tool. Next we have crop. We'll crop over to the side here. It's going to bug me if these two aren't on the same level. There we go. OK, I like these. Crop, it does kind of the opposite of intersect, um, but behaves a little bit interestingly because it's, uh, oh, it didn't do it. I needed it to. Wherever there's intersect, it actually takes the back set of properties instead of the front set of properties like the other ones have thus far. So if I crop this, it's going to retain the difference, the overlap like intersect would, but it's going to take the back set of information instead of the front set of information. But it does leave behind this path that you can still adjust, that you can still change the fill of, um, set it back to a normal circle if you, did, if you needed to for whatever reason, um, but that's crop. All right. Continuing forward, we got two more of these. We got outline. This is one I got to be honest, I have, I don't think I've ever used, but it does exactly what it's going to sound like, where it basically just converts these two paths into a stroke. In my experience, if I click on outline, it just turns them into their purple and green stroke, super, super thin. Um, but you could still ungroup them and have some cool paths, I suppose, if you really need to. Like, I personally don't see the purpose of outline. I hardly ever use it, but it is one of the uh, the shape tools. So it's important that you see how it works. And then our final one, it does uh, minus back and you guys are never gonna guess what it does, okay? If you guess that it subtracts the back exactly like minus front does, then congratulations, you win a million dollars. Minus back does exactly that. With the two overlapping paths, if you click minus back, it takes the back out of the front and leaves a chunk behind like this. So lots of different ways to interact with your shapes, lots of different ways to uh, think about how they could be applied. Let me move this over. How they could be applied to your animal project thus far. But you might be curious, you're like, Mr. Blakeney, uh, was, this is cool and all, but like, how does it apply to my animal? That is a great question. So 
the way that you use the shape builder tools and the pathfinders is creating a lot of these pieces. That's my approach, at least, is creating lots of pieces that you could combine into uh, more kind of bridging that gap between organic and um, organic and geometric. Let's pull this Pac-Man shape over, for example. Maybe this could be like an iris, right? Could make it a little bit smaller, or it could be like a lily pad. I forgot to hold shift. I hold caps lock. There we go. All right, I could put this in my lizard's eye, make it look like it has a little bit more detail in there, right? It's just building up pieces that can add a little bit of extra detail to your shapes. Let's put this guy back over there. Um, but the biggest way, let's see what else we could do here with my specific example. I was just doing demos, so these don't exactly fit into my into my space so far, but they could have a cool effect if we just mess around with them. Just a little bit. I don't know. Still just messing around. Still just kind of seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, uh, and building off of that. But a really useful uh, example of one of the tools that you can use, let me put this uh, shape back over here. There we go. Really, really useful tool that I want to expand on right now is the Shape Builder tool. So we talked uh, yesterday about using that direct selection tool to manipulate these anchor points into shapes that make a little bit more accurate sense to our, our creatures that we've decided to go with. There's a tool right underneath what looks like this like jester hat. I don't know what the icon is supposed to be for this, but it reminds me of like a clown hat. And ignore the cloud hat completely and look at the shape, the tool underneath it with like the blobs and the cursor and the line. So if you look at this little trailer of what the shape builder does, the shape builder is going to combine overlapping paths into singular polygons that become a little bit easier to work with, a little bit easier to fill, especially where we start getting a mess of different overlap right here in the detailed portions of our designs, right? So let's say I have this uh, like eyebrow shaped piece, I have this chin piece, I have this nose piece, and then I have this nostril right here. I got all of these different overlapping things that does not look very cool. I mean, it might look cool, but it could look cooler. Still is not giving exactly lizard yet. Needs a little bit more detail in the shapes before it starts telling me um, that it means that. So if I hold shift on my keyboard and I click on all the overlapping paths that I wanna interact with, Right. We've got my eyebrow, my snoot, and my chin a little bit. And then I click on my Shape Builder tool. If I click and drag with that Shape Builder tool, you're going to notice this trail of like dots behind it. And any shape that you cross through, you see how it turns kind of this gray color? Any shape that you cross through while you're clicking and dragging, once you let go of the mouse, becomes a singular shape. Right? A little bit of weirdness happened with the triangle because it's not exactly... Um, the same portion of the nose underneath. And it also was not selected in the shift, so it's not going to be affected. Now, this is a single shape that I could fill in if I needed to um, with certain colors above and below. Let me make it darker so you can see again. Yeah. It's quite a bit darker. Go right there. OK. The Shape Builder tool, the first thing that it does is when you click and drag, it makes um, it combines paths into shapes. So we'll use the same shape modes example over here for the shape builder tool, um, and then apply it a little bit more to our animals thus far. Shape builder tool. So with the shape builder tool, first thing I just demoed is when you just click, actually when you click and drag, sorry, we're getting a little busy on the, uh, on the screen here. So it's click plus drag. Clicking and dragging with the shape holder tool does not work unless you have paths selected. Kind of worked backwards from this. So if I have V on my keyboard and then click and drag these two shapes right here, click on my shape builder. If I just click, it will also turn them into uh, different shapes that you can then separate like this. But sorry, hold on. I'm getting distracted. We're supposed to be clicking and dragging. My bad. All right, so Shape Builder tool, click and drag. It's going to bring that line of uh, dotted pixels behind it, which will combine every shape that you overlap into a single, uh, it black fills by default, um, into a single, more complex shape, very similarly to the uh, Unite and the Merge features of the Pathfinder. But if we take another example. This will be just clicking with the Shape Builder tool. 
Okay. Got my path selected, got my shape tool enabled. If I just click, it creates those into separate shapes automatically um, that I don't have to ungroup if I ever need to um, if I ever need to split them up. You'll also notice that it keeps the layers with the shape builder tool just clicking on the parts that overlapped. I now have two of these same uh, overlapping pieces, one from the square and one from the circle uh, that I can use in my project if I wanted to maybe create like some dinosaur scales or something, All right? Control D a couple times. I don't know. You can mess around with it, but it does create a uh, duplicate copy sticking with that idea of cutting up paper um, within the Illustrator sort of workspace. And then there's one last thing I'll show you with the Shape Builder tool, and then I will uh, turn you guys loose. I've been talking a lot. I apologize. This is the last thing before you apply it to your animals if you choose to. So. In a lot of the Adobe programs, Photoshop especially, when you hold the Alt key, it does kind of the inverse or the opposite of what the original tool does. So this time we're gonna hold Alt. If you remember back, just briefly, clicking and dragging turns it all into one shape. Just clicking is gonna create those separations. It's gonna create new shapes, it builds new shapes at each overlap point. But if I hold Alt, once I have my two shapes selected and my shape tool enabled, when I hold Alt, on my keyboard, it turns the plus sign into a little minus sign. So if I click and drag while holding Alt, it's going to subtract that portion from the um, from the shape that I've got selected. Or I could click hold uh, sorry hold Alt and click right here to delete that portion. And you can shave down your um, your shape relationships like this by holding Alt. Alt is going to remove parts from the shape, whereas clicking and dragging and just clicking without dragging are going to add more uh, pieces together. Does that make sense? OK, sorry, that was a really long demo. There's a lot of different pieces I wanted to show off. Um, for the purposes of the animal assignment, what you're going to be using this a majority of the time for is creating these more complex shapes out of a lot of your overlaps. So I want to keep my ear hole. I have a nostril uh, lost in here somewhere, um, but I have this big sea of spines that I don't want to have to overlap individually. So I'm going to click and drag with my selection tool to get a bounding box over all of those. You know you have them selected because they'll usually have like a little center anchor point. I can then take my Shape Builder tool and I can just click and drag to make it into one solid shape that I can move um, if I need to. It also divides it up, slices it wherever there is a uh, an overlap so you can create some cool effects uh, that way. But the biggest thing you're going to be using it for is combining overlapping circles or overlapping stuff like this into single shapes that you can fill in um, as you need to. OK, does that make sense? All right, you guys have about 20 minutes to keep working on these. Before I let you go, as a reminder, not that, as a reminder, if we go to the this is your book, so just pretend this is your class. Come on. Okay, you go to your thread by going to announcements and then P6. We look at project 3.1. You remember your deliverables, you need two creatures. You need your initial shape creature and then an additional shape creature. Um, this from Mr. Hendricks says using examples of the pathfinders and shape modes. Um, you don't have to go super in depth, just give them a try. See if you can see how they work uh, on your version. But the biggest thing I want to emphasize is that you need two creatures submitted by tomorrow. So you have your one, you have your other. This is a student example. Uh, Mr. Hendricks's example, we have the bear and the fish, right? You can see how he used the, uh, the anchor point tool and some of the shape building tools to create some of the fur detail and some of the leg like haunch detail, some of the smoothness around here, right? All stuff that we've talked about. And if you ever need, you have his video to reference right here. Uh, for examples in that direction too. Okay. Thank you guys for listening. The rest of the time is yours to work on these. We're going to critique them a little bit tomorrow. Um, and then you'll have a chance to do some final adjustments and submit them. Cool. Um, Brandon, do you have a question for the class or do you need some specific? Okay. I'll be right there. All right. Thank you guys.